All right, enough talking. It's time for us to make something. And today we're going to be building our first Hello World app. Now, this is almost a inevitable step in every single programmer's programming life. Um, he or her will have built a Hello World uh, website or Hello World program. And today we're going to build our Hello World app. And I'm going to show you just how easy it is using Xcode. All right, so go ahead and open up Xcode. And the first thing that you'll see is this welcome screen. And everybody should get it unless you've told it to never display it, um, in which case you can toggle it here. Um, the first and the foremost, um, first and foremost, let's do a version check. Just look over here and make sure that yours also says version 8 point something. So I'm currently using the beta version because I'm recording this ahead of the launch of version 8 but yours will say, you know, version 8.1 or 8.0. But as long as that first number is eight, then we're good to go. All right, so now go ahead and click create a new Xcode project because that's, that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, and then we're gonna click on single view application. Now, when you see this screen, this is kind of like a wizard for building your Xcode app. Um, and you can use different templates to create different types of applications, um, an iMessage application or a page-based application. But today we're just going to stick to single view application. So let's go and click next. Okay, so now it's going to ask you for a couple of details for your app. So let's go ahead and give our app a product name. So I'm going to call it Hello World. Um, and my team is obviously our um, company but you may or may not have one, that's fine. You can leave it blank. And in the field organization name, you can just put down your actual name if you don't have a company or organization. Um, and now this is the part that's quite important. It's an organization identifier. And this is the first part that makes up what is called your bundle identifier. So a bundle identifier is almost like a URL that uniquely identifies your app within all of Apple's apps um, and their inventory. So the important part is this. Um, what they suggest is for you to use what's called a reverse domain name. So here we've put down com.londonappbury because our website is londonappbury.com. So if yours is, I don't know, google.com, it would be com.google. Um, and if you don't have a website, then just go ahead and put com dot your full name. And the reason why this is important is because most domain names, or in fact, all domain names are unique. Um, and this is just a way of making sure that your app doesn't clash with anybody else's bundle identifier. So hopefully nobody who is called calm dot your name has made an app called Hello World. But if they have, then maybe add in your middle name as well just to make sure it's really unique. Okay, great. Now, next we're gonna choose Swift. So there's two languages that can be used for programming uh, iOS apps. And Objective-C is the older language. Whilst in use, we don't really recommend students learn Objective-C from scratch. And this course, we will be teaching you the latest and the greatest, which is Swift. So go ahead and click that. And we're gonna keep devices iPhone and we're gonna keep all of these unchecked for now because we're not gonna be using uh, unit testing within this app and we're not gonna be using core data. We'll show you some of those in some of the later, more advanced apps, but for now, we're just gonna leave it blank and go ahead and click next. Okay, so now it will ask you where you would like to save your project and I'm just gonna put it onto my desktop, um, but if you want to put it somewhere else, then you can go ahead, just change it to whatever folder you want it to be in. Now, there's an important part here that says source control and whether if you want to create a Git repository. So Git is a way of um, version control. So it's a way of being able to manage the different versions of your app or your programming project. And instead of getting um, Xcode to manage these versions, which is what would happen if you tick here, um, later on we're going to show you how to use GitHub, which is a free um, online cloud-based way of managing collaborations as well as um, versioning of your app. So we're going to go ahead and leave that unchecked. And then we're going to go and click Create. Okay, so now that you've created your app, this is what it should look like. 
you will have a project setting page, which is what I'm on at the moment. You'll have a design page, which you'll find under main.storyboard. Now, if you just have a look in um, the file structure over here, um, you could see that we've got different files with different file icons. Now, the ones with the Swift orange bird are our programming files. So they all end in .swift. Uh, view controller .swift is where you'll be mostly. Um, and there's other files which have these yellow outlines, and these are our design files. So launch screen .storyboard is where you can design the initial um, loading screen. So this is where people tend to put in their company logos. So for example, if you open up Candy Crush, that first screen with King showing up, this is where they will design that part. And then there's main.storyboard, which is where you'll be spending most of your time doing the designing for your apps and its screens. And then there's these blue icons, which are subfolders. So in, X, um, in this particular folder, assets.exe assets, this is where you'll be putting in some of your image files that you'll need for your app or your app icons over here. Um, and finally, there's an info.plist, which we won't go into too much right now, um, but this is essentially your property list. And we'll be using it in later tutorials to um, prompt the user to allow us to access their location, etc. So let's just go into main.storyboard. This is where we are going to be for this particular app. And you can see here, you've got a view controller. Now you can imagine your view controller as the canvas here for your screen, for your the screen on your app. So if you have a two screen app, then you might drag on another one. So here you've got two of them. Um, and you can link these screens up. So it might go from, you know, first screen, which is a welcome screen to the login screen or to um, another registration screen, for example, like this. Um, so that's quite simple to do, but let's go ahead and get rid of all these extra screens, which we don't need. So let's look at our main, uh, let's look at our main view controller. Now, as we mentioned before, you have a document outline over here. So this is the file structure for everything that's on screen on your view controller. So for example, if I find a button in the object library, which remember is over here. Now, if you don't see this right side pane the way that I see it, it might be because you haven't um, popped it open. So this button, remember from our Xcode uh, guided tour, this button pops open the right side utilities pane. So let's drag that button onto the screen and you can see that it appears in the hierarchy under the view. So this view is there by default and this is essentially the bottommost layer of your view controller screen. So if we go ahead and change that view, so with the view selected, um, or you could tap somewhere blank on the screen, um, then you can go ahead and change the background color. Let's make it a nice purple color. There we go. And let's just go and delete that button. And then I'm gonna go into the object library down here and I'm gonna search for a UI label. There we go, a label's popped up. Now you can obviously scroll through the um, object library as well to find what it is that you need but it's usually much faster just typing it in. Okay, so let's drag the label onto the screen and we're gonna call it hello world. Okay, great. So you can see that I've edited the text over here and making sure that this particular tab, which is called the attributes inspector is open. So there's a number of tabs as we mentioned in the, again, Xcode walkthrough, but um, the most important ones that you'll be in is either the attribute inspector or the size inspector. So the attribute inspector allows you to set various properties of what are, whatever it is that you have selected on screen. So at the moment, the label is selected and we're editing its property, namely its text property i.e. what the label displays. So there's one slight problem. You can see that I've changed the text over here, but I can only partially see it on screen. And especially if I increase that font size to, I don't know, something like 32, 
you won't see anything on screen other than just dot dot dot. And the reason for this is because it has truncated our label because the text that we have inside is too big for the current size of our label. So you can either go ahead and toggle it by dragging one of the corners, making it appear, or you can actually click on some white space outside of the canvas, reselect the label on the canvas, hold down command on your keyboard and press the equal sign on your keyboard. And it automatically resizes the label to fit exactly the content that you have inside. So that's just a really neat trick that can help you out sometimes. Okay, great. So. Um, other than editing text over here directly in the attributes inspector, we can also actually just double click on the label and, you know, change it over here. So these are equally valid and depending on which one you prefer, you can choose whatever you like. Um, I'm just going to go and change the color to maybe a nice white color, um, make this a bit bigger and then make that font also a bit bigger. Great, let's make it centered. Brilliant, so we have designed our Hello World app. Now, feel free to go ahead and modify that text or the background um, as much as you like. You can change the font of the word by clicking this T, so type button here, and you can change from system to custom, uh, where you'll be able to you know, tap into your usual different typefaces and fonts. So we're gonna keep Helvetica selected and I want it to be type 40, uh, 40 size font. There we go, done. Okay, so I am done with my app. One of the things that's new to Xcode 8 is this little bar down here. So right now the canvas size for our view controller is an iPhone 6S size. So that's a 4.7 inch screen. If we wanted to make it a bit smaller, so this is a four inch um, on the iPhone SE or iPhone 5. Now you can see that when it's a four inch, the text looks a bit shifted to the right. And when it goes back to the 4.7 inch, it becomes centered. If we make it even bigger on the iPhone 6 Plus, it again looks a bit off center. So this is um, because we haven't set any constraints. We haven't set any rules for how our user interface elements, such as our label, should be displayed. So in future tutorials, we're gonna dive deep into auto layout and setting constraints. And we're gonna teach you how to make um, everything on screen look exactly as you want it to on different screen sizes. And also when you change from landscape to portrait orientations. So that's all to be covered. Right now, all we're doing is something very simple, which is making our first Hello World app. So now that I have my screen designed and I'm quite happy with the way it looks, I'm gonna go ahead and run my app on the iPhone simulator. So I'm, I've only got one active scheme over here. So say if I had a watch app or um, a tvOS app, I will have more than one screen, um, more than one scheme to select from here. But at the moment, I've only got an iOS app, so I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to select which device I want to run it on. Now, if you have a device that's set up um, over here, like a physical iPhone that's connected to your Mac, it'll show up um, just under device. And um, in the next tutorial, we'll actually be teaching you how to sideload apps onto your phone. There's a few steps that Apple forces you to go through, uh, confirming your identity and your um, Apple account, etc., before you can do this. But for now, all we're gonna do is just keep to the simulator. So I've designed this for an iPhone 6 screen, so I'm just gonna select iPhone 6 in here, and I'm gonna press play. So this is building the app and running the app on the simulator. So let's go ahead and do that. Now there's a few shortcuts that might be quite useful. For example, building and running, instead of pressing the play button, you can also press command R. Um, now when you're running your app more frequently in the future, when we're getting onto more complex apps, this will be something that will come in really handy. 
Okay, so we can see our iPhone 6 is just starting up. Um, and when you click on this, this is actually within the simulator. So the first time that your simulator starts up, it'll take a little while for it to set up the environment and try to mimic an iPhone 6 as closely as it can. Um, and once that setup is done, you'll see um, almost a replica of an iPhone in your Mac. Okay, so now you can look at the status of how your app is running up here. So right now it's running before it was attaching and basically downloading the package onto the simulator. And now it's showing the app. So perfect, we have made our first Hello World app, way. Um, so let me show you a few things about the simulator. Sometimes when you run the simulator, it can show up as a giant screen. So what you have to do is go into window and go into scale and you can resize the screen to whatever size you want. So sometimes it shows up like this and it looks a bit like a big blob, which is not helpful to anyone. So especially if you have a Mac that has a relatively small screen, um, like a MacBook uh, Pro or a MacBook Air, then you'll need to resize it down to 50%. Um, the other thing is that when you click on hardware, you can click on home to go into the home structure. And it looks pretty much just like a iPhone. Um, with all of its enabled features. So at the moment, our app doesn't actually have an app icon. And you can see this is the default no app icon image. And in the next tutorial, when we make I am rich, we will teach you how to put your app icons into your Xcode project and it will show up in here. Okay, so that's all for this episode. So now we've made a new Xcode project We've designed our canvas, designed our view controller to look the way that we want it to. And we've managed to display Hello World in our own app um, called Hello World. So well done. And this concludes this first module where we introduce you to how to download and get Xcode set up, how to um, use it and some of the various buttons and features it has. So. In the next module, we're actually going to go on to our first proper app that we're going to build. And it's mostly, again, still getting to grips with Xcode, um, understanding how to design apps within uh, storyboards. And um, we're going to teach you how to launch your app onto a physical device. So that's all to come. And I'll see you in the next module.